Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back. Uh, I got a busy week ahead of us. Um, before I get started, um, I want to just uh, give you a quick update on something. I know in the past uh, there's been several questions about the president donating uh, his salary to charity. I've got a couple. I uh, got an update for you on that. Um, to that end, uh, the president has uh, spoken with counsel and uh, and made the decision to donate his first quarter salary in total. Uh, to a government entity, uh, and he has chosen this quarter to uh, to donate it to the National Park Service. Uh, the Park Service has cared for our parks since 1916, uh, and the President is personally proud to contribute the first quarter of his salary uh, to the important mission of the Park Service, which is preserving our uh, country's uh, national security. So it is my pleasure on behalf of the President of the United States to present a check for $78,333 to the Secretary of the Interior, Ryan Zinke, and Superintendent of uh, the Harpers Ferry uh, Park Site, Superintendent Brandenburg. So, uh, no, it's straight up. It is uh, every penny that the President received from the first quarter since the day that he was. Um, it's not a full quarter. It is, yeah, right, because the Constitution says that. Um, <laughs> sorry, that was. Uh, so it's from January 20th, noon forward. With Engel uh, Cash, though. <laughs> uh, with that, I'm going to let Secretary Zinke uh, make a few comments about the Department of Interior and the work that they're doing, uh, and hopefully the President's. So. Well, thanks. And uh, I'm Secretary Zinke from the Department of Interior, for those that don't know me. Uh, obviously, great to be with you. Uh, those that don't know me, I get my inspiration from Teddy Roosevelt. And the motto now in the Department of Interior, if you go to Yellowstone and have the opportunity to look at the Roosevelt Arch, it says, inscribed in stone is for the benefit and enjoyment of the people. Uh, and that's our, that's our pledge. So uh, for those that don't, uh, aren't familiar with the Department of Interior, uh, we span 12 time zones, from the Virgin Islands all the way to Palau. And within our holdings are 20% of the nation's land. We have. 417 national parks. We have 562 federally recognized Indian nations, 567 wildlife refuges, and 221 wilderness areas. And I'm the steward of our nation's finest and most majestic holdings. Um, after riding the horse on my first day, we've been pretty busy, uh, just on public lands alone. Uh, I've signed directives on the first day to expand public access. Uh, important if you're in the West, especially uh, in, the, in the far West as Montana is. Uh, we made sure we increased opportunities for traditional hunting, fishing, uh, and conservation efforts. And we've invested millions across 12 states on preserving our conservation efforts uh, there. On energy, well, that was the, much of last week was, was spent on energy. Uh, we held one of our most successful leases. Uh, 122,000 acres for wind development for on federal lands off Kitty Hawk, North Carolina. Uh, we also stopped the war on coal by continuing the coal leasing program. And I established an oversight committee to review and analyze across the board rents, royalties of, on our federal lands uh, with, the, with the objective of number one, of uh, being transparent. Uh, number two, being Reagan, trust but verify, and number three, making sure the taxpayers that own the public lands are getting fair value. Uh, on the management side, uh, we have unfortunately undercovered a lot of internal controls that weren't there. Uh, there has been in the news several incidences of sexual harassment and a culture of discrimination. And you can hear it from me, I put policies forth, zero tolerance for sexual harassment or discrimination. Uh, our, we have 70,000 full-time employees, and each, each employee deserves the right to enter a workplace that's innovative, teamwork, but free from harassment. On the brighter side, uh, we will pilot the first ever dog-friendly uh, Department of Interior. Uh, puppy Day is coming up, so we've, uh, we've established that. And people ask, why are you doing that? Well, some of it is we compete uh, on millennials. 
Uh, so we're trying to develop ourselves as a friendly department that's going to work with people. We're going to be the a, an advocate uh, for collaboration, and in doing that, we're going to start with uh, being dog friendly. Uh, and also, we've taken to Twitter. Uh, as you know, this administration is Twitter friendly. So, and so am I. At at Secretary Zinke. Uh, and finally, uh, as a veteran myself, I tell you, I am thrilled at the President's decision uh, to donate the check he did today. I did talk to the President last night, and uh, he has decided, as you know, to donate, donate his entire uh, quarter of uh, salary, and we're going to dedicate it and put it against the infrastructure on our nation's battlefields. We're about 100 or $229 million behind and deferred maintenance on our battlefields alone. Uh, and uh, that's on our 25 national battlefields. And, and uh, we're, we're excited about that opportunity. So thank you very much for the opportunity uh, to be with you. And thank you for American people to trust the stewardship of our nation's greatest holdings uh, with us. So I'd like to thank our superintendent, Brandenburg, for being here. He's Harper's Ferry. If you haven't been out there, uh, please do. With that, I'll turn it back to Sean. I will take questions. How's that war on coal thing working there? You're saying that you're going to open it up because of war on coal. Isn't that kind of contrary to what Teddy Roosevelt wanted in pres preserving the land? Well, there's no doubt three things. One is environmentally, it's better to produce energy here under reasonable regulation than watch it get produced overseas with none. Secondly, jobs matter. There's a social cost of not having a job. In some of our communities, coal, mining, forestry are the only job. And you can take it from the Crow Nation in Montana, which I'm familiar with. Like uh, Chairman Old Coyote, the chairman once said, is it a war on coal is a war on the Crow Nation? And coal jobs are the only jobs. And lastly, national security. It is, from a SEAL perspective, it is better to make sure we're not held hostage on our energy needs in this country. And like you, I don't want my kids, sons and daughters, to have to fight for war over energy resources we have here. So national security is, is, is critical in our energy picture. And look, the world is safer when America is stronger. And America is stronger is not being dependent on foreign sources for energy. We can do it here right, and we will. I'm the steward, and certainly we're not going to sell or transfer public land. And I don't pick winners and losers. So coal isn't getting any more of a better deal than anything else. Is it will at the market play, but I want to make sure that what we do is cost effective and it produces reliable, abundant, and affordable energy. But I think to the point, are you going to return the land to its original, pristine yeah, value? I'm, I'm a boy scout. Done? I'm a boy scout. So I was taught long ago that when you when you leave a campground, you leave it in the same or better condition you found it. And that's why we're looking at royalties and make sure we have a reclamation program that, that makes sense. All of us want clean air, clean water, and I'm concerned, as well as you are, to make sure what we're doing is in the best interest of the public in perpetuity. So, last question. Ma'am. Yeah, have you thought about redesignating the Gold Butte Monument in Nevada? We are looking at, at everything across the board. When, when I came in, uh, you know, there was a lot of talk about different monuments in different places, and I've talked to the senators. And so everything's on the board, looking at it. No monument in specific, but looking at the process, look at the law, making sure that the monuments follow the law uh, on there. And at the end of the day, it's important that we operate collaboratively. If you're outside of Washington, D.C., there's a lot of anger out there. And I want the Department of, of Interior, our rangers and land managers, to be first viewed as rangers and land managers, not law enforcement. I don't want to be us, us to be heavy-handed. And I want us to work with local communities, because that's where we're embedded. Our rangers, you know, they have children. They play soccer. They coach. They do all those things. I want to make sure the Department of Interior is the department that works with local communities, works with the states, and we want to be the YEP team. That means be an advocate rather than an adversary. Thank so. you, guys. Thanks, sir. Thanks. 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 We'll, we'll come back. Thanks. Okay. Um, 
I know it's already been a full first day back, uh, but I want to run down a couple of quick things that happened over the weekend. Uh, we're fortunate to be championing many great causes during the month of April that are near and dear to the White House. Uh, we released several proclamations on Friday uh, that are all available at whitehouse.gov. Uh, this morning, it's specifically the President proclaimed April 2nd through the 8th is National Crime Victims Rights Week. Uh, on Saturday, the President declared a major disaster in the state of California as a result of severe winter storm flooding and mudslides in February. Federal assistance will be supplementing recovery efforts in the area moving forward. Also on Saturday, the Vice President traveled to Columbus, Ohio to discuss American jobs in the economy. Uh, he spoke with business leaders at Dynalab, an American-owned, operated manu electronic manufacturing services company. The Vice President told the crowd that the actions that the President has already taken to create jobs in this country uh, make it easier to do business from taking a serious look at the regulatory process to ushering in a new era of American energy. Um, with respect to today, the President, as you know, welcomed President al-Sisi of Egypt to the White House this morning. The two Presidents had an honest discussion focused on areas of cooperation. The President made clear that this is a new day in the relationship between Egypt and the United States, and the President affirmed his strong support of the Egyptian people. It was a candid dialogue during which they discussed both areas of cooperation and of concern. Also this morning, the White House released the official portrait of the First Lady, which is uh, similarly available on whitehouse.gov. Uh, and just about now, uh, the President began a meeting with Secretary of State Tillerson, where they're expected to discuss several topics, including the Secretary's recent trip to Brussels, where he attended the NATO Foreign Minister's meeting. Uh, as you may have known, just prior to the briefing, the Senate Judiciary Committee uh, voted to advance the President's selection for Neil Gorsuch to the full Senate. Uh, while the White House was pleased to uh, that beyond the committee partisan vote, uh, more Democrats have moved past partisan obstruction to acknowledge that Judge Gorsuch is simply qualified uh, and deserving of being on the bench. But we're obviously disappointed that the overwhelming majority of them are still playing politics with the nation's highest court. If the Democrats get their way, and I know the numbers are looking that way, uh, this is going to be the first successful filibuster of a nominee to join the Supreme Court, uh, which is clearly um, unprecedented. Uh, with a vote on Judge Gorsuch's expected Friday, the American people will see which senators are willing to keep this seat open to get in the way of uh, President Trump making progress on one of his most significant choices so far. Also today uh, opens uh, the application process for this year's H-1B visas. The President has spoken about the H-1B visa program in the past. The White House acknowledges that there are issues with the program as it currently stands. However, there are several laws that are on the books that went unenforced in the previous administration. As the Department of Justice made clear and it's released this morning, the Trump administration will be enforcing laws protecting American workers from discriminating hiring practices. Looking ahead to the schedule for the rest of the week, the President will host a CEO town hall meeting uh, on the business climate tomorrow morning. And then in the afternoon, he will make remarks to the 2017 North America's Building Trades Union National Legislative Conference. On Wednesday, as I mentioned last week, he will host His Majesty Kim Abdullah II of Jordan. And on Thursday, after welcoming participants of the Wounded Warrior Project Soldier Ride, the President will depart for a visit with President Xi of China to Mar-a-Lago. The President has been briefed on the devastating flooding that has killed several hundred people in Colombia, and we are working closely with the governments of both Colombia and Peru to support efforts to address the extensive losses and damage ca caused by this natural disaster. Uh, the President has also been briefed on today's attack in, at the St. Petersburg Metro. Uh, the United States condemns uh, this reprehensible attack and act of violence. Our thoughts and prayers are with the injured and with the Russian people as we extend our deepest condolence to the loved ones who have been killed and injured. Uh, attacks like these on ordinary citizens just going about their lives remind us that the world must work as one to combat violence in all forms. The United States is prepared to offer assistance to Russia that it may require in investigating this crime. And with that, I'd be glad to take your questions. Cecilia. Thanks. A couple questions uh, on the same topic. Derek Kushner's trip to Iraq today. Why is he there and not the Secretary of State today? What's the message that the President is sending by having Jared Kushner be the one to take this trip? I don't, I don't think there's a, it's not a binary choice uh, in this particular case. Uh, both Jared Kushner and Tom Bossert, the Assistant to the President for Homeland Security, are on the trip as at the request and, and invitation of the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, who was going there and believed it was an opportunity um, for both of them. It's it's 
ironically, the first trip for both uh, Mr. Kushner and Mr. Bossert. Uh, they're going to receive briefings and updates um, with respect to what's going on on the ground, our military involvement there, and our, our efforts to defeat ISIS. Um, Jared's going to specifically express uh, the commitment uh, of U.S. of the United States to the government of Iraq, uh, meet with U.S. personnel engaged in the campaign, and Mr. Bossert uh, will participate in meetings and briefings to reinforce the strong U.S.-Iraqi partnership to defeat ISIS. But uh, it's not like this is a one-shot one deal. Uh, in the course of conversation uh, and extensive meetings, that invitation was extended and they took it up. His portfolio is um, jam-packed and has grown in recent weeks. Uh, among the things that are our understanding that are in his portfolio, he is to broker Middle East peace and overhaul the federal government. Can he do all of these things? I, I think not to. It, it's not like he's he doesn't he has a team that he oversees, and I think there's a lot of areas that he has uh, been working very diligently on behalf of the government, on behalf of the president's agenda. So, um, going over and getting a firsthand understanding of the work that's being done um, to thank the government of Iraq. Uh, to see some of the sacrifice and progress that our team is making on the U.S. side uh, is an opportunity that I think every government official um, and every member of the media should frankly take advantage of if offered that opportunity. Matt. Thanks, John. Uh, a recent ProPublica report out today revealed that President Trump can draw money from his businesses uh, at any time without disclosing it. So on that, I have two questions. Okay. One, has the president withdrawn any money from his businesses since taking office? And two, can the White House commit that the president will disclose future withdrawals if they take place? I I'm not sure what he's withdrawn. I think that I'm somewhat surprised in the sense that anyone would find it shocking. A blind trust or any kind of trust, rather, the whole entire point of setting it up is that somebody can withdraw money. I mean, that's that's frankly part of the point of setting it up. So, so then why was this change not made? It was made after. No, no, that just. But you you know, no, 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 I do. But again, I, I think okay. that you, 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 you just went and started to say this change was made. Uh, I'm not aware that there was any change. Just because a left-wing blog makes the point of something changing doesn't mean it actually happened. Um, I'm not aware that there was ever a change in, in the trust. And the idea that the president is withdrawing money at some point uh, is exactly the purpose of what the trust, why a trust is set up, regardless of an individual. So, I'm going to just last question on this. So, you're not saying whether or not it has changed, just to clarify. You're not sure whether. No, no, I'm that. actually, to, to, to the best of my knowledge, it hasn't changed. Cool, thank you. Uh, I mean, Olivia, sorry. Thank you. Same seat, uh, wrong person. Yeah, that's right. Uh, I got a couple for you. One, um, there are multiple reports that the administration is looking at uh, arms packages for Taiwan, including uh, missile defense and fighter jets. Can you confirm more? Clarify or no, deny those. Questions. I'm not going to discuss. Okay. okay, and then uh, last August, the president um, sharply criticized then President Obama for not making more of a public case for human rights throughout the Muslim world, throughout the Arab world. Um, you guys have now said that it's better to raise those issues privately. I'm trying to understand the evolution of the thinking there. What what changed his mind? What changed the president's mind? I, I think the president recognizes that those are conversations where. Um, we can, as I said in the statement, that there are areas of uh, that we can work with in cooperation and concern, and that that's best discussed uh, privately in terms of how we address areas uh, that that need to be discussed like that in order to make progress on them. I don't I don't think that should be a huge surprise. Can you raise them in this meeting, do you know? I, again, I'm not going to get into what they discuss privately, but I will tell you that uh, we understand. Um, the concern, and I think those are the kind of things that I believe progress is made uh, privately. Sarah. Thanks, Sarah. John. I have two. Uh, one, has President Trump spoken with uh, President Vladimir Putin about the terror attack in Russia? Uh, not yet. Um, I know that obviously the President of Egypt just left uh, moments ago prior to me coming out, um, but I do know that, um, as I mentioned at the top, our teams have been reaching out uh, to both the government of Russia, the government of Colombia, and, and I, I know that there's been some outreach, I believe, to, uh, to the folks, uh, the government of Peru, with respect to, the, to their, their situation, the mudslides there. Uh, and then obviously the, the violence that occurred in Russia is something that we, uh, we've already started reaching out from a government to government standpoint. Um, if there is a call, uh, we will make sure that we, we read that out. Okay, and secondly, um, Senator Rand Paul has called the reports that uh, Susan Rice ordered the unmasking of President Trump's associates a, quote, smoking gun. Right. Does the president agree with that characterization, and what does he think of uh, these reports? Yeah, I saw Senator Paul's tweet. Um, 
Look, I, I think I, I want to make sure I'm clear. I'm consistent. I think we've been trying to say that from the get-go that there's been an ongoing investigation that we have supported um, looking into this matter. Um, I will say that we have continued to say that I think there is a there is a troubling um, direction that some of this is going in, but we're going to let this um, review and go on uh, before we jump to it. But um, I, I think that it is interesting um, the level of or the lack of interest that I've seen in these developments when it goes in one direction versus where I think it was going, where other other amounts of interest that have come from this room and beyond. I, I'm somewhat surprised um, in terms of the level of interest that I've seen from the press corps at one set of developments versus another set of developments. Uh, that being said, I'm not going to start getting into uh, a further discussion uh, of that. Blake. Sean, thanks. Let me pick up uh, here a couple questions, but I'll start here. Does the White House believe Susan Rice may have done anything illegal? I, I think I, I'm not going to appreciate the effort there. Um, I'm not going to um, start going down that road, as we've said before, if we go down one road, we need to go down them all. And I think at this point, we have supported um, this review that we've asked for. Um, but I do think that when you see the developments that we've seen in terms of uh, the public on the record comments that Dr. Farkas, Evelyn Farkas, who is the uh, Deputy Assistant Secretary for Defense for Russian Affairs, said very publicly that this was part of an attempt of the Obama administration to spread classified information. Um, then you see the developments that have happened today. I'll just say that, as again, I'm somewhat more from a media standpoint, somewhat intrigued by the lack of interest that we've seen in some of these public revelations uh, and reporting that has gone in that direction that we've seen in some of the other directions that we've seen. That being said, I'm not going to get into it. And let me ask you, as it relates to Neil Gorsuch, yeah. um, is the White House comfortable with the nuclear option potentially being invoked? The, the President said multi several weeks ago that um, this was something that, that he would support. Um, we're comfortable in the sense that obviously that decision is up to Leader McConnell to make how he wants the Senate to to uh, to deal with this. I think the majority leader's comments are very clear in the direction that he's headed in. But I I think this is we have entered a whole new league if this goes forward uh, in terms of Democrats really going and saying it's one thing to vote against the nominee. We've seen that in the past, and I understand that. But we've now gone from the devolution of agreeing that there are certain people that a president has the right as long as they're qualified, right? We've seen that in the past. John Roberts, I think, got 78 votes. Um, but when you see that go in one direction versus now that there's literally going to be the first filibuster in modern times on a qualified judge that's going to end up going on the court, we have really come a long way. And I think Democrats are setting a very dangerous precedent when it comes to how they want to do this, uh, because this isn't about voting against somebody or having a, an issue with them. It is literally trying to stop using the filibuster for something that it was never intended for, nor has it ever really been the principle that we would vote down somebody who was qualified. Trey. What is President Trump doing behind the scenes to make sure that his pick for the Supreme Court, Judge Neil Gorsuch, ultimately is confirmed by the Senate? And what message does he have for Democrats on Capitol Hill who have said they're going to filibuster? Well, I mean, if you look at, I think it's four Democrats that are now supporting, saying that they're they're going to vote um, against the filibuster. I think we feel good about the, that level of support. Uh, we, we've, I think, done a very good job of making sure that we have the Republican majority support that we need to to pass it. It is now an internal question for senators to determine how they want to do it. But make no mistake, and I believe Leader McConnell, when he says on Friday, um, Judge Gorsuch will, will be voted as the next Supreme Court justice. Take me through what Friday looks like for the president. Obviously, a major meeting with the president of China, but his eyes are going to be here on Washington. Is he going to be making phone calls Thursday night trying to well, engage? Well, I the think situation? he's going to be. We, we look forward to heading down to Florida uh, Thursday to engage in some bilateral and, and bilateral plus me. I mean, um, meetings with with uh, the president and his team from China. Uh, obviously, that will continue into Friday morning, but we'll see how Friday evolves. But I, again, I'm not. I don't think there's any question right now. Um, according to Leader McConnell and others, that we're going to have a, an Associate Justice of the Supreme Court ready to go. It's a question of how it happens. Zeke? Uh, just a couple questions about the uh, check presentation earlier uh, in the briefing. Uh, uh, you mentioned that 
uh, he was decided to give the money to the Park Service at the advice of the council. Was that is there an issue with him making a donation to a nonprofit? Or? I think there was just th that when given the options, um, he he decided that there was a list of government entities that can accept. Um, Donations. Ironically, it's not as easy to give money to the government as you would think. Um, and uh, aside from the IRS, and uh, and and then I don't think you're giving. Um, but 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 my point is is that um, he he looked through a variety, and for this quarter, um, he he chose the National Park Service. Um, but it was a, a decision that he made based on uh, his council presented him with several options, and um, and he believed that. Uh, that, as Secretary Sinke pointed out, that there was some great work being done there, especially that needed to do to restore our great battlegrounds, and, and wanted to do his. Speaking of giving money to the federal government, uh, the president's been you know, going to Mar-a-Lago again this weekend. Has been facing calls from both officials in New York um, and in Florida, um, either to appropriate federal funds or request federal funds, which were not in the budget for the additional security burdens that they have faced, given his his residence is there, his travels to the, those places, um, or, or to reimburse those local governments out of his own pocket. Obviously, this is a president who is far wealthier than any president we've seen in modern times, and he has the capability to make that uh, to make those outlays. Is that something the president is considering, or has he decided to make those outlays to reimburse well, his I, I think there's a few things. Number one, um, the, the request to go to Mar-a-Lago was something that the Chinese, uh, you know, that was negotiated with the Chinese. And so uh, I think this is a very high-level visit uh, that really has a, a huge impact on our both economic and national security. So um, secondly, the president has an opportunity um, as all presidents, President Bush traveled to Crawford. The President Obama went to Hawaii. Often, I mean, this is this is not something that you can control. There is a security aspect that the Secret Service determines when the President and the family travels. That's that's not dictated by the President of the United States. And third is, you know, I, I would know. Ironically, this is a day that that the President just donated uh, a significant amount of money um, of his salary back to the federal government. Um, and so, you know, respectfully, it's like, it's, it's at what point does he do enough? He just gave a very sizable donation. Probably, though, that's a very small but, but that's amount. not how we judge. I mean, I, I don't, I think to be able to say that, I mean, he, he isn't taking a salary. I think he stepped down from his business. He's walked away from a lot. Um, I, I think, let's, let's, I think at some point, he's, you know, he's, he's done quite a, mon, uh, quite a bit um, in terms of handing, you know, making a donation to the government. John. Um, Sean, back on Susan Rice, uh, if I could. The, the, the fact that it's allegedly the former national security advisor who requested the unmasking uh, when it came to the incidental collection of people who were associated with the Trump campaign and the Trump transition puts that now squarely in the White House. When you look at that, combine it with the NSC rules that were promulgated at the end of the Obama administration to more broadly share intelligence, does this White House look at what she allegedly requested as a national security issue? Or a political issue. Well, I'm not going to. I mean, that that's a nice backdoor into the line of questioning. I think until we, uh, until there's a, a finding of that, I don't want to start getting into the motives because we still haven't. I, again, me getting to the motives assumes certain things in fact that I don't think uh, we're ready to go to yet because that again would be getting in the middle of an investigation. I do think that there's been enough public discussion um, and reporting on this stuff that I, I, I'm not going to um, comment on this any further until those committees have come to a conclusion of, of that sort. So we're not going to start going down and guessing the motives of something that is not assumed in fact yet, but I do think um, that it is interesting that, as I mentioned earlier, the level or lack thereof of interest in this subject versus what has been commented on uh, previously in terms of uh, uh, alleged uh, people involved in processes. So I think there, there is, Margaret. Sean, um, you mentioned that Jared Kushner has a team working with him. Can you help us understand exactly what's in the portfolio who, and who's on the team? And I have a follow to that. Yeah, I mean, he's announced the Office of American Innovation the other day. We named a bunch of those folks. Um, that have been part of that team, and as he looks at various aspects of government, um, he works with different people in the White House um, that oversee different different parts of that portfolio. Whether it's um, part of the team that's doing uh, the Middle East was one thing. So you've got Jason Greenblatt, who's been traveling uh, to the Middle East and other places uh, to do that. There's people like Reed Cordish and Chris Liddell that are part of the team that are talking about the Office of American Innovation uh, that he is. Uh, discussed last week with respect to, to opioid use and others. I mean, so there is a 
team, um, depending on the subject, that is working with him and, and he is providing oversight and direction. So he's overseeing teams handling all these different issues, whether it's Mexico, Canada, so, Israel, Palestine, Iraq, sure. Saudi. Well, again, all remember, on Iraq, uh, don't go too far there. He is. He went. He was invited by the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, as was Tom Bossert, the assistant to the President for Homeland Security, to see the work that's being done there firsthand. I don't think to sort of then translate into he's overseeing Iraq um, is an accurate assessment. He is was invited to go see something by the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, and he's doing it. Um, but my follow on that is, you know, I, I appreciate how he's in such a unique position and so trusted by the president. But there are people who would look at the situation and say. The White House isn't meant to be run as a family business. There are institutions with experienced diplomats who have right. years of decades of lang linguistic and, and experience on the ground. But, uh, with, Why with respect to what? With whatever these issues but, but are, you're, you're, the you just, but you issues just said, in particular right, that you Can you just be clear, though, because you just said with years of linguistic experience. So what situation are you specifically referring to? Well, it, it's partly why I was asking exactly what's in the portfolio, because it's our understanding that Mr. Kushner is involved with Mexico, that he's involved with Saudi Arabia, that he's involved with Canada, that he's involved with a number of different issues, no, and China I, Yeah, and I think, I, I think that there has been, as, as, as he has made clear, initially during the transition, he played a very key role in helping facilitate a lot of those. But now that a State Department's up and running, he has started to push a lot of those. But there's obviously people that are going to continue. To, to yeah, absolutely. But there's a lot of relationships that Jared's made over time with different leaders, uh, Mexico being one of them you mentioned, uh, that, that are going to continue to have conversations with him and, and help facilitate. That doesn't mean by any means that it's being done without coordination with the State Department, quite in fact the opposite. Um, he continued to work with them and to facilitate uh, an outcome, but he brings a, a perspective um, to this and, and began doing that during the transition. But again, it's it's not a it's not a binary choice where it's, he's doing this at the expense of somebody else. So he's a direct line to the president, whereas the other institutions are not. Okay, great. That's even better. Then I think that's a win for our government. Shannon, um, on health care, has the president been reaching out or anyone in the administration to Democrats in Congress? Can you say specifically who and? Yeah, does he still see the opportunity to work more closely with Democrats, uh, given the difficulties with the House Freedom Caucus? And yeah, I, I think the president has made clear um, that he intends to work with, with anyone who wants to help him get to the number of votes. He had obviously was, had a very productive discussion um, this weekend with Senator Paul. I know the vice president has been actively engaged, as well as other members of the staff, with members of the House in particular. Um, and they're going to continue to try to find a way forward. But um, there are some, I'm not going to expose every member that's had some of these. Some of them want to back channel this um, to be, to, to offer solutions and constructive ways forward. But those conversations are happening uh, at several levels within the White House to see if we can find a way forward to get the number of, of requisite votes. But, um, you know, the president continues to work hard. He's having these conversations. Members uh, have reached out to him um, to make their suggestions known. And, um, and so that's, but but we continue to feel uh, optimistic in the sense that there's a lot of constructive ideas that are coming to the table uh, to get us to us to uh, a way forward on health care. I just want to make one um, admin announcement. Uh, tomorrow, um, the president is, as I mentioned, he's giving a speech tomorrow uh, with a roundtable of CEOs on, on the American workforce. And then tomorrow, he'll be speaking again um, at the American National Building Trades Union. So we'll have uh, some kind of background briefing before the day because he is speaking live. Uh, so we will, on the guidance tomorrow, have uh, something for you in terms of what we'll do for a briefing. We're working on that now. Uh, with that, I'm going to end for today and let you guys have a good one. Take care. Thank you, guys. Don't you like this no more? <laughs> I'm pretty sure.